Well, that sound of a, a school bell kind of triggering for some folks. I know that that sound is coming a little too soon for a lot of parents who just are not quite ready for the upcoming school season to start. Of course, some parents may be more than ready for it, but we're breaking down some of the options that Fort Worth ISD laid out yesterday. Got a little bit more clarity on their plans. Uh, again, you can go in person, you can go virtual, and it looks like school will start on time for this district. They did not push things back like some other districts have. At least that's not the announcement as of yet. Uh, Hannah Davis is live in Fort Worth because, Hannah, a lot of parents still have questions, far more questions than answers, but today is a chance for them to voice their concerns. Yeah, good morning, Mark. There's going to be a virtual board meeting tonight, and a lot of parents will have questions because they have found out when school is going to start, but they do say that the deadline is coming up really quickly. August 3rd is when they have to make their decision. So let's take a look at what Fort Worth ISD is doing. That decision deadline came out yesterday when Fort Worth ISD released a 24-page plan on how it plans to handle a return to school in the midst of a pandemic. Fort Worth ISD says it will start on time, which is August 17th, and will offer both in-person and online education, but the district says families need to decide which option they're going to go with by that August 3rd deadline to give the district time to prepare. The plan also went over rules regarding cleaning, spacing of desks, socially distanced recesses, and following mask guidelines from the state. Parents say they're happy to get some clarification, but there's so much more they want to know before they make that decision for their family in less than two weeks. A lot of what, but not a lot of how. And now they're kind of saying, oh, we're going to let the schools figure out the how. Well, okay, when? I think I want to stay healthy and see my friends and play a lot, but I don't know if I can do that because of the corona. Meanwhile, in Dallas, the district there is looking at options of their own. The district tweeted that it will be discussing the following in a trustee meeting this Thursday, including possibly moving the start date back to September 8th, removing some holidays in October because of state fair cancellations, adding a holiday on Tuesday, November 3rd, and changing grading periods from six weeks to nine weeks, and finally, moving the end of the year date back as well. These are all possibilities. Again, they've not decided on anything. Dallas says that meeting will be this Thursday. We're seeing more clarification from districts across the board, but we can expect more news to come down as the story continues to develop. Mark, back to you. Yeah, thank you, Hannah. Parents, it feels like are hungry for more information, although I'm not sure that will really change anything. I think at some point you just have to get into the school year and see what happens, see how healthy everybody is able to be. Uh, coming up in about 15 minutes, I'm going to break down some of the options parents are considering for the fall. It is certainly a broad and diverse array of options. We're going to take a look at that. And also want to tell you about the new episode of our Yolitics podcast. This week's is definitely worth checking out if you are a parent and have some questions about the upcoming school year because the Jasons are talking with teachers who tell us they are worried about their safety. Some so worried they're actually prepping their wills, which might have sounded crazy a year ago, maybe not so crazy now. Take out your smartphone, point the camera at that QR code on your screen. That'll pop up a link, which will take you right to that podcast. Definitely worth a listen. Sonia? All right, Mark, thank you. Uh, there is hope in the fight against COVID-19. 23 vaccines are being developed right now, and one that's sort of ahead of the pack will soon begin widespread testing in both Dallas and Fort Worth. Wake Research and the Fort Worth Office of Benchmark Research are selecting participants right now for phase three testing of the Moderna and National Institutes of Health vaccine. Now, phase results involving 45 people were just published all of those people produced antibodies, which one clinical researcher calls promising. Everybody who participated in that study had an immunological response. To every single person, that's huge. That's very, very encouraging. The study is looking to involve 30,000 people, but half of those people will be given a placebo. Frontline workers are preferred. Those over 65 who may be more vulnerable are also a key target. So if you are interested in applying, all of the information is online. All you got to do is click on this story at WFAA.com.
We are seeing more and more research pointing toward masks helping to stop the spread of this virus. Our Cleo Green is live in the newsroom with an update on that. Cleo. Hey there, Sonia. Yeah, it's been about three weeks since Governor Greg Abbott made it mandatory to wear a mask here in Texas. So the big question, has the mask mandate been effective locally? And the answer is yes. So a new study was released here. Researchers at the UNT Texas Health Science Center say the states who mandated masks much earlier, back in May, were able to protect against the June surge that we saw here in Texas. Now, Denton, Dallas, and Tarrant counties are all showing trends of slowing down the coronavirus in terms of emergency room visits and hospitalizations. But Collin County, all right, it's showing the least change in a positive direction. Collin County did not put a countywide mask mandate into place. So as of this morning, 28 states now have a mask mandate. Montana, Colorado, and Arkansas just joined this uh, list last week. Now, we know that when you walk into many stores like Home Depot, Walmart, you're required to wear a mask. But some stores are reversing that decision this morning. Dollar Tree and Family Dollar announcing that they're reversing their decision. They're no longer requiring a mask, but requesting that customers wear them. And this kind of plays into the political debate when it comes to masks. And then we go to this viral photo and tweet of the president here actually wearing a mask. And he says many people say that it's patriotic to wear a face mask when you can't socially distance. There is nobody more patriotic than me. Uh, this morning, political experts saying that maybe this photo will entice other states to join this list of mask mandates like Florida, which is a hot spot. I also want to mention here that the president will also, he also announced that he will resume those coronavirus daily briefings that he stopped back in April. We could see one today. I'll send it back to you.